Hello everyone. Welcome to the next session on Access Workbench Tutorials. In this session, we are going to analyze the first design of this brake rotor for thermal analysis. We will start by double clicking on steady state thermal. Next, we will go to engineering data. As we have discussed before, the material which is used for this brake rotor is cast iron or stainless steel so we will choose both the material and we will go to project and update project i will analyze using both the materials and i'll give you a comparative value accordingly you can choose which material gives better results so i'll go to geometry and right click i will import the geometry of the disc brake rotor Next, I'll go to model and double click on it. The first material that I'm going to allocate is grey cast iron. Next, I'll go to mesh. I'll change the sizing to fine and update. Then I'll go to steady state thermal and insert temperature on both these faces. Next, I will go to steady state thermal and insert convection. I will give convection on this face and the inner faces. Apply. I will give fill coefficient by clicking here. You can see that you can either give a constant value, say 0 0.001 or 5 into 10 raised to minus 4, some value you can give. Otherwise, you can just click on import temperature dependent, click on stagnant air horizontal cylinder and apply. So it will apply convection coefficient based on the temperature as you can see here. Now this temperature which I applied, I didn't give it a value. So the disc brake rotors are generally subjected to very high temperatures. So let me give this temperature as 100 degrees Celsius for analysis. For the second design, I have taken this temperature as 85 degrees Celsius. So you can choose any one value and you can analyze accordingly. So next I'll go to solution and insert thermal temperature. I will also insert the heat flux over the body, solve it. So here you can see the temperature over the body. This 100 is showing maximum value that we have given and 99 is the minimum value that is obtained, 99.95, which means very less heat is lost into the ambience. And these are the ends where you can see there is a variation of temperature and based on the color you can judge the values from here. We will see the direction heat flux. So this is how the heat is lost per unit area. The value is 0 0.000525 watt per mm square. The value is really small and that is why you can see the temperature is almost maintained over the body. So this is as far as grey cast iron is concerned. Let's change the material to stainless steel and analyze once more and let's check the result over the body. So now if you see the value is 100 maximum and minimum is 99.83. It has not changed much as compared to grey cast iron. 
and the direction of heat flux is 0 0.005 to 4 watt per mm square again the value is almost the same so this is what you get now I will show you another way of analyzing this disc brake rotor that is instead of giving this temperature suppose if I give convection over these two faces applied and here I will give again this way of convection coefficient and I am going to give this temperature over here as 100 as you know that this temperature is 100 so this temperature value I am going to suppress and considering these two convections that I have given this convection 1 is given on these surfaces if you recollect and convection 2 I just gave on these two faces so we will go to solution and let us solve once again and check the result the first material is stainless steel now because that was the material which I chose second for the previous analysis so this is how you can see the temperature loss has happened now if you check 84.285 is the maximum value and the minimum value is 83.385 the reason being this major region which was subjected to a very high temperature was not having convection in the previous analysis but now I have given convection because it is not possible that there won't be any convection from this area and it will only be at a particular temperature. So if there is convection, obviously there will be heat loss from this area as well. And this is the direction of heat flux. The value is 0.00464 watt per mm square. This is along the x-axis for this disc brake rotor using stainless steel as a material. Now let's use grey cast iron and let's see what will be the result. So I'll solve once again with grey cast iron as the material. You can see the temperature variation over the body. And this is the direction of heat flux. Now for both the material, the value of temperature is not varying too much. Similarly, the direction of heat flux is also not varying too much. The reason being the design wherein I have just considered one surface over here. If you would have had another plate over here, then in that case you could have seen a better variation of temperature. But for this design, this is how you are going to get the values by considering these two materials. Now suppose if you have any other material, you can just add it to your engineering data and analyze. And you can just figure out what would be the temperature variation and direction heat flux over this disc brake rotor design. So with this I end the session. I hope you have understood how to analyze the disc brake rotor for its thermal analysis. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.